Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays The Binding of Isaac. It's fair to say I'm not very happy with the last run, don't worry. I'll get the mouse pointer off the screen. Um, I didn't play terribly on the last run. Did we lose? Did we win? I mean, that's debatable. In a way, we won. By the way, already uh, taking red heart damage, not my idea of a good time, but that's okay. We're just getting started here. What did happen on the last run? Um, I played Kane. We didn't get very many good items. We had kind of a series of bad luck, but we did get a free brimstone and enough HP to make it work. Unfortunately, I was the world's biggest ding dong and uh, ended up not taking the Polaroid. I had mom's purse, so that either gives me a slightly greater excuse or even less of an excuse, depending on your perspective, I'd say. Um, Basically, I went through like this agonizing decision. Do I take the Ace of Spades or do I take the Polaroid? Or sorry, do I take Ace of Spades or do I take the Curved Horn? And then I ended up taking them both uh, along with leaving the Polaroid behind. Anyway, so we beat Isaac and I didn't even notice. It, at the end, I was still so baffled. I was like, can I make that mistake? Can I still make that mistake? It's been like 200 episodes since I did that. But yes, I... Um, I did do that here, so I'm not proud of myself, and I think we did have a genuine chance to actually win that last run. That being said, isn't it a little bit more funny, at least from my perspective, maybe as a defense mechanism, I think it's a little bit more funny to have a run like that where, you know, I show that I'm human and dumb, uh, than just another chest victory with Brimstone, and, and uh, hopefully a lot of people see it that way as well. Uh, range downgrade sucks pretty hard. Being on an XL floor sucks pretty hard to begin with because we, uh, you know, already have to get keys to actually open these item rooms that we've come across. Hopefully we do! Otherwise it's gonna be a long road uh, to actually, you know, success here. <sighs> well, here's the thing. Lifesteal is sometimes a lifesaver, sometimes a life ender if it fucks up your uh, permanent Polaroid invincibility. So I think we'll reroll it. And I know Sacrificial Dagger is not amazing. But I think I'm okay with taking it right now. Hopefully we get um, many more opportunities to open doors and get rerolls, And I'll be happy to use those at the appropriate juncture. But for right now, um, Sacrificial Dagger is fine. At least we've gotten something on this floor um, that is an upgrade and not just a downgrade. Like the range downgrade that we got already. So I'm gonna try to avoid fucking with this neutral fly. And I'm gonna sneak in here and hopefully pick up some money. I really doubt the shop will be worthwhile on this wall. I mean, it might be worthwhile, but it's gonna be very difficult for us to actually get to it. Uh, considering, you know, the whole key situation and the whole, you know, money situation. The whole everything situation, basically, that we have going on right here. But that's okay, it's very, very early on. Pinky Eye is a great trinket, I'm, I'm very happy to have that. Um, and it's, you know, not smart to be heralding doom and gloom already so early into uh, a run. We haven't even seen a single boss yet. We may actually still be able to get a deal with the devil as a result of not taking damage on the boss fights. Um, or we could just get a deal with the devil or angel on future floors, you know? We don't have to get one on this floor, although it might be for, for the best, you know, it might be nice. I had a feeling that would not be the secret room. I did not think that that chest would just contain a shitty trinket, though. It happens from time to time. That's some more damage I'm not necessarily thrilled about, but we also got another key. And uh, I would make that trade 10 times out of 10. Shitty damage, but at least we get a key out of the situation. So, this will be item room number two. Really doubt that we're going to see a uh, deal with the devil room on this floor now. Could still happen. Ideally, this would just be a good item and uh, would erase all of the doubts that I have in my mind already, but we'll see. Um, it's Remote Detonator, which is, if you're gonna have a reroll, Remote Detonator is one of the best items to reroll, because you get five bombs, uh, and then you get the reroll, and the reroll gives us, uh, basically, is that Stigmata? No, that's Blood of the Martyr. Blood of the Martyr is a damage upgrade. Very happy to have it, even if it is a special item. I love it! I actually, it's a great point of personal pride that what people yell at me for now in Binding of Isaac videos, and most people at this point are are quite, you know, calm and reasonable and, and normal, um, but whenever people get like really bent out of shape about my Isaac play, mo uh, more often than not now, it's about um, my inability to understand special items, or my ignorance when it comes to special items. That's a point of personal pride for me, because we've come a long way from, you know, not understanding, you know, what items actually did. I know there's still some items that I, I'm a little bit, you know, in the dark about. I only recently learned that toothpicks is actually just a superficial item, but still, um, we're getting down into the, you know, banal minutia of Isaac at this point. We may actually be able to go to our secret room here, or we could play the judgment. With rerolls, um, I kind of need to make a decision right away, or I should make a decision right away. I think this is a very 
large first floor. I think I'm gonna go for Judgment, honestly. I think 8 cents is much more likely to give me something from Judgment, even if it is just consumables. Uh, but I think there's a pretty good chance that we get a reroll pedestal out of it. Uh, and we did, and it's an HP upgrade, so I'm happy with that. We were very unlikely to find the secret room on this floor anyway, just by virtue of it being uh, the first floor. Although I don't know if it follows second floor rules for secret rooms, or if it follows uh, first floor rules. Most of the time, an XL floor follows second floor rules, so maybe we would have been able to find the secret room. But getting an HP upgrade, very nice as well. On the off chance we actually do get a chance to get the uh, deal with the devil on this floor, I'll be very happy to have this. So. I'm actually thinking that so far this run is pretty darn decent. We've gotten a damage upgrade, an HP upgrade, a very good trinket that hopefully I'll be able to... Oh, no. <laughs> a very good trinket that hopefully I'll be able to keep with me uh, as a result of finding Mom's purse or something like that. Cube of meat is alright, and um, we got another key for a bomb there, which is an adequate trade in my mind. Who's boss number two? Duke of Flies. Alright, very, very easy. Um, and we're strong enough to fight the Duke of Flies without using a bomb, I would say here. Which is not like, oh, we're, the, you know, I am become Death the Destroyer of Worlds or something like that. But, you know, it does make us, you know, a little bit more confident, I would say. No deal with the Devil. I'll just take Squeezy. I like the Spirit Hearts. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to be in the position that we're in right now. I'd say that was a, a pretty good first floor, all things considered. W came into it with zero keys, ended up opening both item rooms, uh, getting decent items out of each of them, whether you, depending on how you feel about Sacrificial Dagger, I guess, although I do feel better about Sacrificial Dagger now that we've, um, you know, buffed up our other, uh, orbitals a little bit, so we have two orbitals instead of one. It's not the secret room. This might be, like, a terrible decision, but I am gonna make a, you know, quick glance around here to try to find secret rooms, um, in the hopes of getting enough money to possibly make the shop worthwhile, like there's no way we're getting anything for four cents. If we could even get three more cents, uh, or... This is, uh, an interesting situation, isn't it? The Ankh is a pretty good item. If we re-roll it, we could get trash. I think I'm just gonna take it. There are, um, you know, some very good items in the secret room pool that are better than the Ankh. Raw liver is fantastic. Um, I think you can get Pyro or Skeleton Key, but I'm not totally sure. But there's also some items in the pool that are way worse than the Ankh. Uh, I don't want the Shovel, I don't want the Unicorn Horn, I don't want Shoot to Whoop, I don't want uh, the Fetus items, because they kind of compromise the integrity of the run to a certain extent, says the guy who takes Brimstone and Mom's Knife every time. I said the joke so you didn't have a chance to. How do you feel about that, motherfucker? Um, but I think... You know, the Ankh for a bomb, that's what I'm going to bo boil that value proposition down to. An Ankh for a bomb, the bang the bang dicky up jump the boogie, is a pretty good deal, I would say. Uh, one that I can feel uh, very good about. If you gave me the choice to take uh, an Ankh for a bomb, I would take that choice. I would take you up on that deal a hundred times out of a hundred as long as I had more than one bomb. Or at least one bomb, I should say. Our item room contains holy water and holy shit, that's a bad item. Almost as bad as the hourglass. Eh, you know, maybe the hourglass is a little bit better, but um, it, I mean, it's really, you know, probably high time for me to redo that like 10 worst items in Isaac uh, list. But it, my dream project for The Binding of Isaac before Rebirth comes out is like a three hour long video, which would just be all of the items in The Binding of Isaac ranked from like, you know, 130th to best. I doubt it'll actually happen, because. First off, what kind of format do you put that in? That's like a format you'd use for like a magazine, not for a YouTube video, but um, maybe do it in like 10 parts or something like that. I don't know. It's an interesting idea, isn't it? And the other reason that it would be funny but also terrible is because people would really take it personally and get bent out, of, bent out of shape, but I think a lot of people would see the entertainment value as well. Plus, it would just be cool to kind of like sit down and actually hash that shit out for the first time in my entire life. I mean, getting the top 10 items in the Binding of Isaac was easy. There's like 30 items to choose from. Which one are the which ones are the 10 best? Very easy to make arguments for them all. Um, that was terrible damage on my part, but that's okay. Um, but you know, going from worst to best would be crazy because there's a, a huge like overlap or not overlap, but a uh, huge middle ground with like 70 items that are useful in some situations but not in others. So I am going to be a little risky. I, I took our Eternal Heart from that second secret room right away. Obviously, this means I'm gonna do my very damnedest to avoid taking damage. Uh, let's fight the boss right away just to get it done. 
It's gonna be Fistula, and you know, with the tiers upgrade, decent damage, we should be okay to get through this without getting hit twice at least, but we've gotta get through this without getting hit at all, because maybe I'll get hit on the rest of the floor, you know? So, oh, that was kinda close. Weirdly enough, one of the things that's helped my dodging is actually just kind of like, not moving immediately. Taking a second to be like, okay, where should I move? Obviously it has the potential to backfire pretty drastically. There's an HP upgrade, and our deal with the devil contains Brimstone and Guppy's Tail. We'll reroll both of those, and you know what? Let's go a little hard here. Get some Spirit Arts. We got that Eternal Heart to back us up here. Um, so I figured we'll, we'll take huge damage and tears boost there. And I, we'll still have Isaac's same amount of starting health, which I think is pretty solid, so... I'm happy to be, uh, I'm happy to have picked up both of those. I think that's a pretty solid set there. You trade three red hearts, you get three spirit hearts, and a huge, uh, tears damage and speed bonus. It's pretty nice. We may get a chance to go to our shop here. Uh, secret room locations look pretty, you know, obvious, I guess I would say. We're not gonna get another reroll, though, which sucks because we're not gonna reroll the hourglass, but... We'll see. Uh, it's either here or here, I think. Yeah, there it is. Uh, and instead of using a key, we could use a bomb, but we actually, you know, desperately need bombs at this point, weirdly enough. Hopefully we get a good item in here without the need for a reroll. Yes, Nun's Habit is that item. Don't really want the Spirit Heart. And I'd say we handled this floor properly for the most part. We got Nun's Habit, Mark, Pact, two HP upgrades, so which takes us to minus one for the floor, but Everything else that we got is a huge bonus, so that was pretty good. Did we get anything else? I don't think so. Still, very solid. So we'll head down. Now I'll take this pill. Please don't be a health downgrade. That's bad trip. That's that's fine. I still didn't want to take it just in case it fucked us a little bit, you know, on the last floor. Uh, ruined our chance to get that eternal heart. That would have been terrible. So... I'm happy to have handled that situation the way we did. I think it worked out properly. And we've got a very nice foundation for a very good run here. Nun's Habit is one of the, the holy trinity of shop items. It's basically Nun's Habit map compass, in my mind, uh, for the items that I value the most, I'd say. And we've gotten a lot of tiers upgrades, our damage is very solid as well. I'm feeling uh, very confident. Mind you, HP is a little bit of a sore spot. The game's been very generous with respect to HP so far, so that means, you know, proportionally there's probably less HP upgrades in the game now, uh, in the boss room pool specifically. So we've got to be uh, maybe a little bit uh, on the lookout for anything that can help us out with respect to that, but I think everything's coming up Millhouse, sort of. Uh, a ladder could get us some money there. We could probably also swing it with bombs. But I think also we should just go fight our boss right here, maybe get another deal with the devil opportunity, but mostly just finish this off, uh, finish off what's probably going to be the most difficult room of the entire floor. And of course it's actually a very easy boss. Uh, I end up fighting this boss very, very often for one reason or another, and I like it. I still oftentimes end up taking really dumb damage as a result of just being me, and you saw that uh, in motion right there. That being said, what's done is done, and we do get a deal with the devil, and we also got some more HP, so maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Now Krampus. Yeah, okay. Exactly what I was hoping for, and in contrast to the last run, this Krampus fight is gonna be way, way easier. We're not quite one shot in Krampus yet, and uh, I know that I've gotten some range downgrades, so, you know, you might be saying, oh, this is your perfect opportunity to finally nut up and reroll uh, Lump of Coal. I'm not gonna do that. Lump of Coal is, um, Lump of Coal is getting socks and underwear for Christmas, you know? When you're a kid, you're like, Lump of Coal, this isn't Mom's knife, how am I supposed to kill Satan in one hit with this? Uh, but then when you get older, especially when you're in college, I think you're like, socks and underwear, fuck yeah, thank you, Mom and Dad, because I would never buy this for myself, but I need it, you know? You need someone in your life to to get you the things that you wouldn't do for yourself to make you a little bit better off. Um, we should, at the very, maybe it's, I know I'm just like false starting all of these sentences here. Here's what went through my head during that interval there. I was like, well, a bomb for six cents is pretty good, but maybe we can find the secret room and there will be like nine cents in there. But what's the average, oh, that's really good, super, uh, SMB super fan. Um, what's the average payout for a secret room? Is it better or worse than six cents? And then I was like, well, sometimes you can get an item. Where do items factor in on the whole money situation? So I had a whole clusterfuck of, of shit going on upstairs. When I think what I'm going to do is see if I need six cents to get an item from the shop. And if I do, then I'll come down there and do that. Obviously, I'm very glad that I went to the um, curse room here because we got a free ability to fly. 
certainly does feel a little bit like somebody up there likes me a lot right now. We've got some very good items, and uh, we are only on the fourth floor, which is kind of crazy. We are better in almost every regard right now than we were on our cane run uh, on the last episode. I have more HP, maybe not more damage, but it's close, even though I had brimstone. The, that's basically the only thing I lack, is the ability to like very easily hit everything. And now we don't need to use a bomb to get that money, by the way, but... Um, yeah, I, I lack like a, a move that basically allows me to kill everything as soon as I walk into a room, but that's not so bad. Uh, I really doubt we're gonna get another reroll, which is quite unfortunate, but I still think it's worth the key just to check. We do have Nun's Habit, so actually it might be prudent to hurt myself to get a better chance at a good shop item. Might sound a little silly, but uh, I don't think it is. Alright, that was a terrible fight for Wrath. Very easy for us, more bombs, uh, more red hearts. We're gonna lose spirit hearts to make this happen, but sure, you know what? Hit me! I want you to hit me! This fly is gonna be... Uh, an important mechanism for us to hopefully get a uh, compass or map or at least something I consider worthwhile. Book of Revelations, you know, it's something we could buy to give ourselves the spirit hearts. But it's not really... Oh, this is an e a much faster way to make this happen. Uh, it's not really something I want to do. I need to get the money as well. Coin purse. Uh, we know that there's a tiers upgrade. Do we actually have enough money? We've got to have enough money. It would be hilarious if I did all this and then still couldn't find the secret room or get myself the amount of money necessary, though. All right, so there's the compass. Now we'll go look for our money situation. Uh, I know, uh, you know, there's definitely no chance we're going to miss this. I, I just remember that not only is there six cents for one bomb, there were pennies in the corners as well. Um, so doing all that and hurting myself for the compass seems quite smart. We still have two floors left to get the map or something like it. And uh, it looks like full health is not going to be an issue for us. So we'll work our way back over here, and what a darn good floor! HP upgrade! Yeah, this will be enough for sure. Barely, but it's enough. HP upgrade, uh, the ability to fly, lump of coal, and now the compass. And SMB Superfan, which is an all stats upgrade. So yeah, this is, uh, this is an amazing floor. Quite a great floor. We may still want to look for our secret room as well, just because why not, right? Like, we have plenty of bombs, for now at least. Not gonna shoot the fire just because it's annoying to do so. This is some patented Northern Lion luck right here. This is uh, a run of above average quality, I would say. Considering we're on the fourth floor and, uh, you know, we've gotten like four damage upgrades already. If you can't, like four DPS upgrades already. SMB Superfan, Mark, Pact, uh, Squeezy is a tears upgrade. Anyway, uh, we get a one up. We already have the Ankh. We'll take the one up too. I really doubt that we'll end up having to use both of them. I hope we won't have to use any of them, but uh, if we do, we got them. So, let's head down to the next floor and I'm going to recaffeinate here for a second. Mmm. Probably should have picked up that hard, but it is... That coffee was far too hot. It distracted me. We know that there is a mini-boss in that secret room. That's okay. That's, that's actually a good thing, truth be told. Because it means that our shop is going to be, um, you know, rich with items. Hopefully, a very prosperous and bountiful shop. And uh, even if it's not, well, we can reroll whatever shitty item we get on it. The only question is, when do I want to fight the boss? And the answer, or sorry, the mini boss, I should say. And the answer is probably um, right as soon as I get a. I probably should have done it a floor, or sorry, a room earlier. But this is fine, just in case they drop uh, an item. And. At this point, I don't really want to pick up the steam sale. I might pick up the quarter, just because it would give us guaranteed access to, you know, enough money for the next few shops. We'll see what we get, and then we'll, you know... There's no no point in dealing with hypotheticals when in, like, three seconds we'll have the real situation ahead of us. So we just ended up getting a lot of money for that. I took some damage. It's all good. We got a lot of money for that. Probably, you know, roughly one quarter's amount of money. And we now want to uh, get to some of these rooms so we can reroll them as soon as possible. Looks like the item room is closest, so I'll handle that. And, uh, yeah, there's really nothing I can complain about on this run. And that means that I'm at a little bit of a loss when it comes to what we should talk about for commentary. Um, like, sincerely, if I'm not complaining, what am I even supposed to say? Peeper's Eye. Oh, there we go. Peeper's Eye is a piece of dog shit. It's not very good. It's actually all right. I don't think Peeper's Eye is that bad, but Stigmata is so good. Stigmata is a really good item. So even when I try to complain, the game's like, oh, I'm sorry I offended you. Here you go. How about, uh, you know, having an item that you actually like a great deal? And I'm starting to get a lot less salty about the 
chances of, uh, or the likelihood that we'll end up not having pinky eye later. Wheel of Fortune, yeah, I mean, we might as well hold it, right? Uh, this room sucks a little bit. But, since we can fly, and we do a lot of damage, it's pretty easy for us to escape, and even if we can't escape, it's pretty easy for us to shoot our way out of these situations. Uh, small rock. No. Well, I can still feel pretty okay about that. Let's see, I really doubt we gotta deal with the devil here, but the precedent has absolutely been set, so... I'd say there is a non-zero chance for sure, especially if, especially if I end up taking zero damage against Peep, which is actually not super unlikely. Because I, um, as long as I avoid his, uh, A, the bullets, but also B, the, um, the laser beams that he shoots out, I shouldn't get hit. Like, I'm not gonna get hit by Creep, obviously. I just gotta stay not directly on the side of him, and, uh, watch out for the eyes as well. And then, I should be totally fine. We did not get a deal with the devil. We got Code Hanger. I like Code Hanger. A lot of people maybe disagree with me on that one. That's okay, you're, you're entitled to. I think it's pretty good, though. So, we have a shop remaining. No other secret rooms that we can see on the compass here, so which means no secret rooms. Um, not secret rooms, special rooms. My mistake. I think we're gonna go downwards. That looks like a dead end upwards. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get uh, at least one reroll by the... Well, I mean, let's put it this way. We have a reroll right now. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to get a second reroll if we fight our way over to the shop. So it would be really nice to have like a hermit card to maybe mitigate that, but... Wheel of Fortune is, I think I said, I, I coined this uh, in an earlier episode. It's like the worst card I'll save. It's not a good card, we, like having a slot machine is largely worthless, but it is worth, if you've got nothing else in that active uh, card or pill slot, it's worth taking it down to the chest just so you can get an extra item out of it eventually. It's like a, you know, time-released item. Um, so, yeah. The death card is something that I won't save for the most part. I'll, I'll use it as soon as the opportunity arises, but uh, something like the Wheel of Fortune card I will save, and it usually proves more useful, I guess. I'm not saying, I'm not sure if I'm saying Wheel of Fortune is a better card than death. I'm just throwing it out there. Just spitballing a little bit. Haven't had a very good floor here. I've, um, I mean, in terms of items, they've been fine, but I've taken uh, a lot of damage by being kind of an idiot, but it's okay because we're relatively consequence free right now. Uh, and getting the um, the map is lovely here. We'll also buy that second key. Or fourth key, I guess, but second item. Now we have map and compass, so they didn't change our layout on this floor because we've already seen basically everything. Or, you know, totally everything when it comes to the actual layouts. Um, we'll gamble a little bit here. We don't have a lot of red hearts, so i got to be a little, uh, you know, smart about this. And we probably will have a shot, uh, sorry, an arcade on the next floor, so... Uh, it's getting a little scary. Really don't want to die just by being an idiot on a run that's really good right now. So I'm glad that we got uh, something we can reroll at least. And that becomes Kamikaze, which is also still trash, but at least we've taken it out of the pool. And we've taken the IV bag out of the pool, which means future blood banks will work out for us. And we really should have a good chance of getting a blood bank on the next floor uh, as a result of uh, having 17 cents. Hopefully we'll also find a shop that's worthwhile. We've had very good shop luck, but, you know, I would like to have more very good shop luck as well. You ever, you work in an office, you go to a potluck? I'm going to explain to you why I don't like potlucks. This is how we're going to go on this run. This is how you know we're in a comfortable position right now. I used to work in an office. Very nice people, okay? Everybody worked there very nice. Um, we'd have these potlucks sometimes. And I was, for lunch, I was a pretty traditional guy. Maybe I'd go out buy a sandwich or a salad or something like that. Or I'd make my own lunch, which was typically a sandwich or a salad. And I'd t take it into work and eat it and I'd enjoy myself. Lunch would be, you know, highlight of my day, a nice little break. It wasn't gourmet, but it was all right. But then every once in a while, we'd, the people would be like, are you excited for the potluck? We play in this potluck six weeks from now. Get hype, motherfucker. It's like E3 for, for office workers. And that, that is actually not a joke, by the way. You, people who work or have worked in an office, maybe they have family that work, that work in offices. I think an office job, you know, it's kind of nice, but it's a little cushy, you know, you got some security for the most part. A little boring from time to time, but anyway, this is not, I'm not trying to judge anybody's career choices. I'm just saying, don't look down on office work, man. You just go on Reddit all day. Maybe not the most fulfilling thing in the world, but it pays the bills. Anyway. Survivor pools, pedometer challenges, and potlucks are straight up the fucking E3 for offices. Anyway, long story short, um, 
Actually, you know what? Before I talk about Pollux, I want to talk about that, like, pedometer challenge thing, because the office that I worked at also had this competition, which was, like, really probably, you know, best of intentions, but poorly advised. The competition was basically, like, who can drink the most water? And it, it was like, you know, make sure you're properly hydrated. You know, for most adults, the reason their health's in a bad position is not because of a lack of drinking fluids, right? It's always nice to stay hydrated. I know I, you know, advocate caffeinated beverages during the binding of ice. You should drink water as well, you know, keep your, your cells bathed in the delicious, you know, elixir of life, basically, the universal solvent. But it ended up being this position where people were drinking, like, 11 glasses of water during a, a, a working shift to compete with one another for, like, a $50 sharper image gift card. And you're just like, alright, this is, someone is gonna get themselves killed. This is like, hold your Wii for a Wii part two. Anyway, I, I don't mind, uh, the idea of a potluck. But, you know, you sign up six weeks in advance, what are you gonna bring? Um, I don't fucking know. I don't really cook. I make sandwiches and salads. People are like, oh, you gotta bring some. Okay. Then you go to the potluck. Everybody's bringing fucking mayonnaise-based salads. That's what they should really just call a potluck. The potluck is mayonnaise-based salads and then whoever bought Doritos. Whoever was like, I fucked up. Here's Doritos. That's the best part. If you don't like mayonnaise-based potato, pasta, macaroni salads, don't fucking go to a potluck. You're shit out of luck. That's what they should call it. They should call it your, your pot's out of luck. I don't really want poop right now. As someone who finds uh, mayonnaise-based salads, not really to my liking. Not for any particular ethical reason, except that I think it's kind of creamy and disgusting. Um, it's it's really problematic. Just do like a pizza day or something. I'll throw in five dollars for pizza. It's it, the same, you know, a health level as a macaroni mixed with a fucking you know chopped up boiled. But oh yes, mom's purse. Very happy to have you. Um, this will allow us to keep Pinky's eye, or get something even better, and then keep that. Um, but yeah, long story short, fuck mayonnaise-based salads. I'm not gonna go on a tirade about, uh, you know, mayonnaise-based salads the same way I go on a tirade about, uh, ketchup, mustard, bread, integrity, if you watch the Northern Line Live Super Show. Because it's me, it's my own personal problem. I know a lot of people, um, they, they love these, you know, down-home, 4th of July, uh, mayonnaise-based salads. It's my, it's my problem, it's my palate that causes me to not like them very much. Just need a little bit more variety, you know? There was one potluck, another, uh, I was like a student worker, uh, another student worker made a gazpacho that was fucking delicious. That was the highlight of all potlucks ever, next to the person who just fucks up and brings Doritos. I f totally forgot what I was talking about. I won that water competition, by the way. Uh, I don't really want Loki's horns. The re and the reason I won the water competition is because I was going through a period of, you know, existential quandary. You know, I was questioning, why am I doing this job, blah, blah, blah. I was just about to start working as a teacher in South Korea, and I was like, hey, that's gonna be so much more fulfilling. Yeah, well, you know, you win some, you lose some. Anyway, uh, so I would actually drink like 12 glasses of water during an eight hour work shift, because that would mean that I'd have to go to the bathroom like every 25 minutes, and that gave me like a 45 second period of, you know, solitude and, and break from work. Um, which, at the time, I, I think was exactly what I needed to get a quick refresher and start my day. But eventually people started being like, do you drink that much water so that you can go to the bathroom a lot and get breaks from work? And I was like, fuck, how did they figure out my master plan? I thought I was like Jason Bourne. Anyway, there's, um, you know, escapades from Ryan's working life. Now I could just take a piss right now if I wanted to. Well, I've done it before. I've, well, I haven't actually done that before, but I've gone and like answered my door before when it rings during the video. Anyway. Long story short, I was always worried that at, at work, I was gonna get reprimanded because I'm a long pooper. And I think, you know, I, I've talked a lot about my fecal insecurities, again, mostly on the NLSS, but, um, you know, I, I typically, it takes me like 10 to 15 minutes sometimes get all the, get all the bad stuff out of there. You know, you are eliminating waste products from your body. They're, they're toxic products. You want to get them out of there. Um, you want to make sure you're not doing a half-ass job right. You don't want to keep that poison tucked inside there. Um, and I was always worried that I was gonna get reprimanded. It never actually happened. We're not gonna get another re Oh, uh, wait, we have a blood bank. I'm an idiot. Uh, it never, never actually happened. I was always worried that someone was gonna be like, have the uncomfortable conversation with me, like, what are you doing in the bathroom? And I'd be like, well, I'm just pooping. That's what I do, I poop in the bathroom. Um, which is what everyone should be doing, I think, for the most part, if you gotta go. Let's play this blood bank a few more times uh, and get off of this terribly, deeply personal uh, conversational thread. Why do you even get me talking about this? Uh, I'm wary about how much I'm gonna gamble here in order to get rerolls. So the first time we get a half decent item from our 
item room, we're probably going to take it just because we're not in a terrible position. We're in a very good position. Let's not risk fucking it up by going to town on the blood bank for no reason. The quarter is not that decent item, though. Allow me to recaffeinate for a second. Delicious. Um, now, the way that we should probably handle this is maybe... No, you know, disregard that. I was going to say we'll go into the curse room after we play the blood bank once, but that's just too much in the way of, like, backtracking for my personal taste. We can always use our money to uh, to gamble on these ding-dongs a little bit, you know? And uh, maybe get some red hearts or something as a result of that. Might as well play you one more time. Um, I'm really stoked to have Pinky Eye. No question about that. Uh, I really hope that that would be the pretty fly. I thought, oh, what the hell? My keyboard was getting a little sticky there for a second. Not in the gross way, but in the way that I was very concerned that maybe we we're gonna have the same glitch we had last time. Let's walk it back up to that item room. I do resent having to do this a little bit. Wish I could just teleport to the item room right away. I guess I could via spider mod. That would probably take me a little bit longer though, and there's always the risk that I accidentally break the game. I'll take Skinny Odd Mushroom. I know it's a damage downgrade. Super tiers upgrade, though, uh, and we've had a lot of uh, damage upgrades, so I think we can afford to, you know, have a downgrade for once in our lives. Live a little bit, you know? And we want to keep our rerolls active here. Like, I want to have a reroll for the curse room. But I don't mind just expediting the whole process by, uh, you know, playing the blood bag until we get the blood bag, which should happen. We have so much money as well that I expect that red hearts are not going to be hard to come by. In the shop, was there anything that I could buy? I think I've already kind of gone through with that. Um, keys are, are lovely, don't get me wrong, but I kind of need some more red and or spirit hearts to make me feel a little bit more comfortable. Don't give me the fucking fly love. Oh, you dick muncher. Well, we have a reroll now. Um, makes things very interesting. I almost want to put Wheel of Fortune down here so we can... Because here's what I have now, is that I have this reroll pedestal that I want to play around with, but I don't have any red hearts with which to do so. Oh, you f motherfucker. Well, here's what I'm thinking. Play this twice. I have the blood bag, blood bag. Okay, thank you though, I appreciate it. We reroll both of these shitty items. We only get one chance, basically. Um, they're both kind of still shitty. But now that they've exploded, we come up here and we play this fortune teller a little bit. Don't get hit by, or sorry, uh... Slot machine, don't get hit by a fly. Don't get exploded either, that's pretty bad for business. Oh, thank fucking god. We can get a little riskier here, but I don't know how risky I want to get on this run. Like, this is... I mean, we have one-ups. We have we have IV bags, or sorry, uh, onks. But I'd rather not die if possible. You know, that's a big part of my whole, you know, living base strategy. I think I am going to go pretty hard, though, just because it's funny. So I don't really want Able, and by really, I mean I just don't want Able at all. Um, oh, thank you. Okay, so that's basically one free play that I was going to do anyway. So please be Blood Bag at some point. Blood Bag, Blood Bag, Blood Bag. No, we reroll these shitty items. We get Unicorn Horn, which gives us a pretty good chance to get Blood Bag. At the very least, more money we can use for the slot machine. Yay, we did it. Read it. Okay. And now, um, because these are still two shitty items... I totally still feel like if there's like spikes or something, I could walk myself into them. Fires maybe more likely. I can't really walk my way into spikes, but if there's fires, I would love to take them up on that opportunity to reroll a little bit more. Because there is basically a double item room available in that shop. But maybe, just maybe, we should cut our... Oh, you know what? They, they only do a half heart, so I don't feel like this is too dumb of me. I might be mistaken. But we'll come back in here, and, you know, a double item room is a double item room. It's worth giving it a little bit of our attention. Mr. Boom and Ghost Baby, both uh, also, again, pretty terrible. I think I'm going to do it one more time. I know I have a problem. I have an addiction, okay? I picked up Ghost Baby thinking it was something I could put back down. I think I'm just going to leave, actually. I'm happy with where we're at. I'm going to lose some health going into that curse room anyway. Um... Let's just sneak through here. All right, so let's not be too greedy. This floor's already been good to us. You know, hang tight here. What do we have in here? Spiders. All righty. We didn't take damage on the way out there. What? What is up with that? We didn't take damage, I think, at least, from what I saw. But we gained the nuns have a charge anyway. And we didn't take damage on the way in either, which is expected with the ability to fly. But not taking damage on the way out is, is brand new to me. I don't know, man. Maybe my spider mod's getting corrupt or something like that. 
time for a fresh install. Now, keep it up here. Got him to about 40%. Oop. And I'm just going to try to stay close because Sacrificial Dagger does do a lot of damage when it actually has the opportunity to do so. Probably going to explode. Uh, I, I very often still get damaged uh, at the end of the fight. Just because I don't know when it ends. Or, like, I don't know where the explosion happens. So we want stem cells. Let's make sure to take the Polaroid this time. That's a pretty important part of any uh, young man's life. And we'll move onwards. With map and compass, this should be a, uh, a very quick affair for the first couple of floors here in the post-Depths uh, universe. Now, I'm sure you guys notice it, the, the whole potluck situation if you're still in school as well. Maybe not with mayonnaise-based stuff, but whenever you do like a cooking thing at school, something's just not right. Everybody's baking cookies. You can't make a meal out of 12 cookies. You shouldn't make a meal out of 12 cookies, probably. I'm just, you know, not trying to tell anybody how to live their lives. I'm just saying. Podlucks, they, they take away personal choice a little bit. Maybe it's, I, I just don't, I, I kind of resent having to, you know, be force-fed a sense of community or something like that. But, like, we're all adults here. Why don't wanna, we all just choose our own foods and then we can converse, you know? It's not really team building. It doesn't really build our team to tell me that Lori has a terrible macaroni salad. That's like a team sundering effect, really. Anyway, please stop doing your foot maneuver because if you, you just stop doing that, you'll be dead in two seconds as we just saw. And we did get a deal with the devil, not unexpected. Those are re-rollable as hell, of course. And Luckfoot is all good pills. Nail, you know, it is what it is. I'm not going to take even the shot speed upgrade. I think we'll just leave. Utero 1 was a total wash. That's okay, though. There's an arcade and a library and all sorts of riffraff like that here. But we're just going to skip past it all and uh, bum rush the boss fight, basically. 13 bombs. We do not have poison bombs. I think I've re-rolled poison bombs. Ah, oh, that was terrible damage. That's okay, though. I really don't expect to be in a problematic uh, position until Isaac. Uh, even, you know, the odd damage on this floor, unfortunate, but, you know, not going to end our lives or anything like that. Um, there we go. This is a little scary just because there's going to be so many shots in the air at any given time, but it's all right. As long as we can start taking some of them out, there's no problems or fewer problems. One of you left, and our boss fight approaches. Curse room is interesting. We got exactly the same room, basically. It kind of went differently, though. I don't think we killed as many people right off the start, which is actually a little problematic. But if we just get a poison like shot to actually work here, then we can let you know the greatest enemy of all time, time itself, actually help us out. But this is okay. Um, we will take out the turrets, and now it is bomb city, bitch. Bomb, bomb city, bitch. TNT was the Nobel Prize winner, bitch. That's not like a weird bit of trivia that doesn't really apply in a song like that. Um, isn't that, that is true though, right? Alfred Nobel was like the inventor of TNT, although I think it might be snobsable to say that he invented the Nobel Peace Prize as like his penance for inventing TNT. TNT's done a lot of good things, man. You know, the, the blasting to create housing, or the holes for housing foundations and shit like that, subway tunnels. You, I give yourself more credit, Alfred Nobel. You manipulated science in, in a way that I'd say society considers largely positive. Did we just not have the ability to go to Shoal in that situation? Like, it didn't even give us the option to go to Shoal. I'm very confused about what's happening in my Binding of Isaac world right now. That was almost uh, terrible damage. I think we might be due for a reinstall of Spider Mod. I seriously have changed nothing on my computer, uh, yet it's... It, Either my brain's like a little bit off today, and you might be saying that's pretty obvious based on the whole potluck conversation, um, or whoop, that was close. Still very close. Oh, there we go. Well, at least we didn't waste a bomb, I guess. Let's focus on the positive. Um, or spider mod is slightly off, which indicates to me maybe there's, you know, problems with my computer happening, or maybe it's, I don't know. We'll see. You know, video games, sometimes the harbingers of a, a computer getting up there in age. You know, weird stuff starts happening happening uh, in your video games. Although, usually it's like graphical glitches. Oop, ah, bad damage, but we got uh, the health back, which is fine. And we got Dad's key, which is garbage. Probably should have picked it up to take it out of the rotation, but whatever. I really thought that we would be safe there. We were not. I still feel very confident. 
And uh, I still feel very confident. This enemy should not be very problematic at all. Red hearts, not red hearts, okay. We don't really have anything to do on this fight. We don't have any great strategies, you know, we're not gonna be doing anything exceptionally clever. Basically, this is just your old school dodge and shoot fight. That's, that's good. I think there's a pretty realistic chance we lose on this fight. When we come back with the Ankh, I think we'll be in a lot better of a position. But I do think that maybe I'm starting to run up against it on this run, you know? Maybe I'm starting to find myself in a not so great position. We can still win this one, it's just very unlikely. We're shooting so quickly that, um, you know, it, it's very difficult for me to offer up adequate defense. I would love to get out of this fight without losing a life, though. Lives are not fully precious for us here, but, you know, the more of them we have, the better our odds are, no matter what. That was a bad dodge on my part. Okay, so we've got full health again. Anything else we want to do here? I don't think so. Hmm. That's a mistake on my part. We should come down here for sure. Use one bomb and reroll Dad's key, hopefully into raw liver or something like that. So we will pick up Dad's key. Oh, and then I left the room because my keyboard messed up again. Very strange. We get another one up. That is actually so worth two bombs that it's it's kind of comical. So I'm gonna try something a little different on this fight. This time, I'm gonna run up. We're gonna place a lot of bombs. We're gonna make sure that we save at least one. And the reason we're going to save one is for the uh, Wheel of Fortune on the next floor. Uh, and, you know, how did this work, truth be told? Not that great. Still took two hits. Really, really have to focus on dodging. I hate to say it, but I would almost love to have Celtic Cross on this run. Um, brief periods of invincibility where I could really go to town with Sacrificial Dagger. I think that actually helped me out a lot here. Now this fight is going a lot better than the fight that preceded it, though. He should be on third phase Isaac any second now. And now we just give him both fucking barrels of our eyeballs here. Fill him full of these poisonous ass tears. Macaroni base salads. Oh, get out. That was um, a terrible dodge on my part. And I found myself in a very, very uh, inenviable position. All right. It's going to be like this, is it, game? You're going to surround me with these motherfuckers? Did you see that turn on a dime I had to do there in order to not get fucked in the butt in a in the bad way? The way that's not what you want, I guess, for the most part. Um, now, we have an Eternal Heart. That's very nice because it'll help us with our next one-up as well. I wonder what comes next, the Ankh or the next one-up? I almost feel that just by virtue of having as many lives as we've had, we'll be able to uh, maybe swing this one, but... I'm glad we lived, that's for sure. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's pretty good. Mmm, that's also alright, at least. If you're gonna have to reroll, at least you, you know, do it right. And, uh, we get attack fly. I say we take this, and we take this, and we reroll everything else, yes, including the attack fly. Harlequin Baby's not terrible, but. Oh, we don't have a bomb left to go to the secret room. That's fine, though. Um, it's not particularly strong, obviously. So I'd rather save that and maybe get something better out of it. Even if it just ends up being something that gives us a little bit of HP, it's pretty worth it, I'd say. So I really want Red Monstro 2 to die. I got super lucky to not uh, get caught in any of those crossfires there. In fact, I got super lucky with the way this fight has been handled in general. Uh, oh, okay. Die before you... Die before you jump again. Unfortunately, that's not how it went down. Should be any second now, right? There we go. So there's a red heart. Uh, I should go get that bomb. I think we're gonna win. I think we just have too many lives. Even if we have like a 60% chance to die, that was the knockback on these quad shots, man. Even if we have a 60% chance to die on each individual fight. Oh, that was a great bomb situation there. Uh, I think we're totally gonna be okay. Okay, maybe if we stop taking uh, four hearts of damage on the horseman rooms, uh, that would be helpful as well. I'm gonna leave that heart because I might need it for later. It looks like this is probably not gonna be to earn, as Twitch might like to say. I mean, okay, there's something to be said for portable slot. There's also probably something to be said for taking um, the shears into the boss fight or even Necronomicon into the boss fight, but um, I'm not gonna worry about that. We'll probably get another chance to reroll if I had to guess. And I think it's more valuable to save those as reroll targets than anything else. 
So I'm mostly worried about the knockback on, on Super Lust here. And I think that's very reasonable. Very reasonable thing to be afraid of. I was really hoping that would be full health. That's okay, though. May get lucky and be able to keep these guys in sync with one another. And of course, it's always awkward when you have to finish that sentence knowing that, you know, it's absolutely false because it's already worked out in a different way. You gonna shoot your laser at me, big boy? No, we got some lasers getting shot here. All right, seriously, like, there's a... I knew we couldn't get out of there without taking damage. Now, just one of you die. It's the easiest thing in the world. All you gotta do is let it happen. Uh, we're gonna come back here to our middle room. We have a bomb we can use to access the secret room, but we're gonna wanna re-roll the, the big room instead. I'm still not gonna take that red heart. I still think it's better to save it for maybe later. Um, sure, I'll take Sad Onion. I don't think a speed upgrade is necessary. I will take Spider Butt though, even though it's a weird position to be in. But I think Spider Butt is kind of all right for this boss fight. The slow will help me dodge. Fuck it, let's take the red heart. We're gonna give this our best college try on the first try. With Nun's Habit, we'll be able to use Spider Butt three or four times. It also has a Necronomicon effect, a very slight one, but a Necronomicon effect no less. So let's use that right away and um, Wow, that is a, a lot of shots coming in here, huh? Yeah, that's that's a, that's a ton. Uh, <laughs> I still think we got a pretty good shot here. There's a serious fuck ton of bullets coming for me, though. Now, let's settle down. Oftentimes, the first phase is where I do the worst, and then I get together on the second phase, and then the third phase is just who can, you know, fuck who first. Um, I think we're going to make it just fine here, though. Yeah, yeah, it seems okay. Next hit will be a spider butt, which will give me this, and you know, really just gotta watch out because you don't have a period of invincibility. Any anytime I don't get hit is a big victory for me at this point. Oh, there's spider butt again. He's dead. He dropped a red heart. Okay, I think we're unkillable now. Well, not unkillable, but largely unkillable. We did it. Not a difficult run, but a fun run nonetheless. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.